Father, I just thank you tonight, uh, today rather, for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you have got a plan for your church and you've got a plan for each and every person that believes in you. Lord, I pray today that you'll help us uh, find that way that you have, our place in your kingdom, where, where you want to establish us, what you want to do with us, what you want to do with your church. Because, my God, we believe that we're living in a time when, when Lord, we, we really, really need to see a move of your Spirit. And, Lord, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Well, how many people know that uh, God can do whatever he wants? God's on the throne and God is supreme and God moves mightily and we see uh, lots of things that God does, how he, how he just moves in such a, a way that blows your mind. Right in the very beginning of time, he, he, he had a thought and he said, hey, let there be light. And as he said those words, it just... I, I couldn't, cannot imagine the, what, what went on. We just hear the words and we read it in a little line in the Bible, but... But to, for that to take place, the, the, the things that had to come together and the, the magnitude of the whole thing was just so dynamic and so powerful. And today we have everything that God said we would have. And so in our thinking now, we, we sort of get a bit of a complacency in, in, our, in our walk with God even, thinking, well, you know, God's just going to do everything. i got news for you. God will not do it alone. He can, he can do whatever he likes, but somehow or other in God's wisdom, he's chosen a church, he's chosen a people. He said, I will build my church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I'm going to have a people of power. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so in our mind, and one of the greatest, one of our biggest dangers is the way we think. Because the way you think, that's how you'll react. And if you think you pass your use by date, well, that's how you'll react. But I've got news for you today. It's got nothing to do with how old you are. It's really how available are you. It's are you available? Are you, are you a person that says, God, I just want to dedicate my life. I want to give you my life. Whatever you want to do with my life, you can do. You want to, I believe he wants to use people in a mighty way. I believe that God wants to pour out his spirit on all flesh. God wants to touch his church in such a dynamic way. He wants to help the brokenness that we see in our world today. There's so much tragedy, so much going on. So God wants to pour out his spirit on all flesh. But if in our thinking that God's just going to do it himself. God's just going to pour it out from heaven. You know, really, he did that 2,000 years ago. And it's still being poured out today. So if we just think, well, God's just going to do it from heaven, and that's, that's what's going to happen. But really, if you can just catch something of the Spirit, you see, but right now, God wants to pour it out through us. He wants to pour it out through his church. He, he really wants you to have such an experience and such an excitement and such, a, such a, an encounter with God that, that you cannot help yourself. If you remember the disciples of old, when they were threatened and they were told never to speak in that name again, there was something inside of them that was greater and stronger and more powerful than any threat or any discomfort or anything that anybody could ever put on them. They said, whether we're going to agree with what you're saying or with God, you choose. But we cannot help ourselves. We cannot help ourselves because we've had such an experience and such a touch from God. It's so real to me. It's so very, very powerful in my life. You see, today, the thing with, we can go to church, go in and out of church and not even sense the presence of God. Not even get excited. Or just, man, let, let's get out of here. <laughs> That's what some people might be saying right now. <laughs> but God wants to do some things through us. 
wants to pour it out through us. In the book of Acts, we know the book of Acts very well. And I'm just going to remind us Pentecostals. You know what? I, I believe that the Pentecostal church needs to get reminded about who we are. Is that okay? Acts chapter 1, why not? Acts chapter 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost was, had fully come, they're all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire, and it sat on each of them. And they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill me again, Lord. Pour it out on me again. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Something from heaven came down. The baptism in the Holy Spirit isn't just an, uh, uh, an experience. I believe it's everything. It's the beginning of everything. And so we find here that, that after a little while, uh, there's things starting to happen and, and people are starting to, to complain and some people are getting perplexed and some are, are even saying they're drunk. And see, what happened to Peter on that day of Pentecost when the divided tongues of fire came on him and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, now he finds himself in a situation and there's people there that are saying all these sort of things, but the Holy Ghost kicked in on him. The Holy Ghost that had, been, that, that had touched his life, that had been poured out on him, all of a sudden is activated on the inside of him. And if, it, if there was ever a time in the church history is right now that we need the Holy Ghost to be activated on the inside of us. It's not good enough just to say, I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I speak in other tongues. I do this or I do that. I want to tell you there's got to come a manifestation. There's got to come an activation. And, and God wants to kick in on you. He wants to kick in that power of God on you. And all of a sudden, Peter stood up amongst the, with the eleven, and he said, hey, listen to me, you guys. These fellas are not drunk, as you suppose, being only the third hour. But this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. In the last day, saith God, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And he began to preach the gospel. And that day, 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. I want to tell you that Holy Ghost can kick in on you anytime you like. I was having a coffee with a guy the other day. And as we were there, we'd talk for an hour or two or something like that. And we were just chatting away there and it came time to go. And as it came time to go, I went, reached out my hand to just shake his hand. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost kicked in. <laughs> and I looked him eyeball to eyeball and I started saying some words. And they weren't just idle words. They weren't just thinking in my mind. It was the Holy Ghost that would, it can penetrate deep on the inside. And it's not there just so it makes you feel good. It's to activate and motivate and bring something to pass on the inside of your life. To take us to another level in Jesus' name. Amen. This guy, Peter, I love Peter. He's a great guy. And Peter there, all of a sudden, he, him and John, they, they go up now to the temple to pray. They're just going to pray. They're minding their own business. They're, they're just going up to pray. And this guy's standing there, and somehow or other, there's something there that will cause the mighty power of God that's on the inside of you to kick in if you allow it to. Do you believe that today? How many people want to see the Holy Ghost kick in on you and change your life forever? Amen. And Peter's there and he looks around and these guys rattling in his tent looking for a bit of money. But Peter now, the Holy Ghost kicks in on him. Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, walks over to this guy and says, Hey, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Arise and be healed. And immediately the power of God flew it, come out of his life and touched this man. Friend, we're not here just to play church. We're not here just to you know, twinkle toes with Tiny Tim. We're here to be the church. We're people full of the Holy Ghost. We're full of the power of God. And I believe that we can change the atmosphere. We can change things. We can change the, the plan that the enemy has. What an amazing God we serve. Peter stood up and full of the Holy Ghost. You see, some people get touched and some get filled. 
We used to sing a song to get a touch from the Lord. It's so good. And that's lovely to get a touch from the Lord. I'm not belittling that. But oh, I want to tell you something else to get filled. It's something else to get filled with passion. We're singing that song today, renewing me a passion for you. I want to tell you, friends, that's got to bring a tear to your eye. It's got to touch something on the inside of you. We're not just singing songs. We're not singing lullabies. We're not, we're not just singing songs waiting for the late people to come. We're singing songs that will activate and motivate and do something on the inside that will cause the mighty Holy Ghost to kick in. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I think I'm getting it now. <laughs> oh, Sharabundi. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, God spoke to a prophet and said, Fill your horn with oil. Fill your horn with oil and go. I want to prepare myself a king. And he goes to the house of Jesse. And they file in one after the other. And finally, young David comes in. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God speaks and says, That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. I want to tell you, friends, God wants to anoint His church again. He wants to touch His church again. I, I want to get myself into a position. I want to just cry out to God in such a way that God will come down and say, That's the one. Hallelujah. I'm not being bold. I'm not trying to be proud. But I want to tell you I'm hungry to see a move of God. I weep when I hear of the tragedies and the atrocities and the things that's going on with humanity. Amen. I look at that little baby that's going to have to have an operation. And old oh, friend, something on the inside of you has got to rise up and say, you filthy mongrel devil, how dare you touch that innocent little child? Get your filthy hands off her. I want to tell you, friends, a day for passive prayers, if it be thy will. <laughs> I think something's kicking in. <laughs> Go fill your horn with oil. And here as this man comes into, into this young shepherd boy that looks so, so who, nobody, pours oil all over him, anoints him with oil. Not many days later, there's a great war going on. And this young boy goes down with some cheese and some bread and some things like that to, to see how the war's going, what's going on. And as he walks in there and he's looking, some people say David was just lusting after the king's daughter. And you can preach all that sort of rubbish if you want to. But I want to tell you what I believe really happened that day was that boy walked into that battlefield. He just walked in there minding his own business. But all of a sudden he heard the threat of that mongrel devil. And I said, give me a man. And all of a sudden that oil that he'd received not many days before, the mighty Holy Ghost fire that started to kick in on the inside of him and cause that young boy not to be a boy anymore but cause him to be a man of God and he stood his whole five foot six or whatever he was and he said is there not a cause I'll fight him let no man's heart faint because of that mongrel foul filthy devil excuse me for my bad language See, friend, the Holy Ghost, the church, we've got to get the Holy Ghost kicking in again. The Holy Ghost has got to kick in again, amen. We've got to believe and start allowing something to manifest. We're living in a strange day today. Fill your horn with oil. The anointing oil that David received that day kicked in. Kicked in, amen. The book of Moses called Exodus. The church, the people of God are greatly afflicted. Taskmasters, masters, all kinds of restrictions that made their lives bitter with hard bondage. We mightn't have Egyptians ruling over us today. We may not have taskmasters there, but I want to tell you, friends, our society and our whole world today is crumbling under debt. Gambling, pornography, alcohol, drugs, 
causing lives to be destroyed and smashed. Well, friend, Jesus, our God, wants to destroy the work of the enemy. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of Satan. And these works of Satan must be broken, must be smashed. But we can say, oh God, we can pray, oh Father, oh God, the creator of heaven and earth, do it. Here's a, a world that's taskmasters. There was a man that, that God wanted to use. His name was Moses. He was miraculously delivered, miraculously set free from, from the taskmasters. And we know that he grew up in Pharaoh's house. We know there is this young man as he had a pa passion to see his people set free, he'd see the bondage. One day there, as he saw an Egyptian hurting one of his of fellow people, and he goes over there and, and he kills the Egyptian, buries him in the sand. I want to tell you, friends, good intentions will not get the job done. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. We need a move of God's Spirit. Moses flees to the backside of a desert. Comes Jethro's servant. Mess is still going on. But all of a sudden, something happened that Moses finds a burning bush. When the Bible speaks of fire, as far as I'm concerned, it's speaking about the Holy Ghost. John says, there's one coming after me. I'm not worthy to even do up his sandals. But when he comes, I'm going to baptize you. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. And here is Moses there minding his own business. And here is this burning bush. And the, and the angel of God speaks to him and says, Moses, take off your shoes you're standing on holy ground. And the, the Spirit of God started to speak to Moses and started to talk to him about what he wanted to do. And he said, I've seen the oppression of my people. Friend, that's the same God. He sees the oppression of, our peop of this people. He sees the way that debt is destroying lives and, and different things, the way man and, and goodness knows what. You could, you could just talk about it all day, the atrocities of the enemy, the taskmasters the mess, the pressure, things that are happening that should never happen. But God is the same God. My Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when God says, I've seen the oppression of my people, and I'm coming down, I'm coming down, I'm going to do something about it. Oh, I can even, I can even see Moses, and I've got to put myself in his place. He's going to say, oh, that's been a passion on my heart for so long. I want to see those people set free. And there's not one person in this room that doesn't want to see uh, Australia one for Christ. There's not one person in this room that doesn't want to see a revival on the Sunshine Coast. But I want to tell you, it won't happen until you do something about it. You can have all the religious prayers and you can say all the right things and you can have all whatever you want to do. You can be trying to help God out like Abraham and Sarah. They ended up with an Ishmael. Good intentions aren't good enough. Only the fire and the power of God is going to change something. And allowing God to break the strongholds that get around our imaginations and our thinking that says we're too old or we're too young or we can't or we'll never make it. And as he's standing there and, and God says, I've seen the oppression, I'm coming down, I'm going to set my people free. And he would have said, oh, that's wonderful, good on you, go for it, God, go for it, go for it. And then he said these words, he said, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. That's where he said, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. You got this wrong. You said you were going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it through you. 
Now, how can you do that? He said, what's that you got in your hand? He said, a stick. He threw it on the ground. He threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent. I want to tell you, friend, you would... Oh, shut up. <laughs> he threw it on the ground. It became a serpent. He took off for his life. I want to tell you, some of you have started to move in the Holy Ghost. You've seen the manifestation of God, and you bolted. <laughs> Somebody looked at you when you put your hand on the side. Yeah, oh, get out of here. <laughs> get you, oh. <laughs> we went into a, an asylum once, Clark Taylor and myself. We went into this asylum and this lady was in there. She was sitting there quite, quite calm. And they had this room, but they had these glass things and people just looking through the glass every now and then at us because it was a pretty secure, tight spot. And uh, anyhow, we're just... Next minute, we, we put our hand on her to pray for her. And she goes, ah, yeah. well, we took her hand off. <laughs> we let her settle down again. We try to do the same thing. We thought we'd get locked up. We bolted. We, you, you take off. Friend, I want to tell you, it's time that the Holy Ghost Church of the living God went back and started to pick up the things that we've left behind, the things that were so easy to get rid of, the things there, the power of God, the anointing of God, the manifestation of the Spirit. Because it's the time. It's time. Turn to somebody and say, time. It's time to see the church rise again. It's time to see the church in all its glory. Amen. He was in a back, in a, in a desert place. In the backside of a desert. I want to tell you, friends, if ever the church is in a desert place, it has to be this hour we live in. We're living in an amazing day. He mostly thought he was finished. He mostly thought his days were over. I like it with Keith when he stands there and says, I'm not finished yet. Not finished until you've got no breath left. While you've got breath, we'll praise him. We'll do whatever we can, we can do. The fire of God. There's a situation in the, in the, in the church and, and, and they had no food. Now Jesus has been preaching to these people for so long and, and the disciples come up and they said, you better send them away so they can go and get some food because they haven't eaten for so long. What did Jesus say to him? Say to them, you give them something to eat. What are you talking We've got nothing. He said, what have you got? What have you got? We've got a couple of fish, a few loaves of bread, five loaves and two fish. You know what he said? And I want to tell you, if you don't remember one thing I've said today, if you don't remember one other thing, remember this. You might think you don't have much. You might think it's too little. But I want to tell you, Jesus said these words, Give it to me. Give it to me. Give you whatever it is you have. Give it to him. And watch him multiply it. But if you don't give it, he can't do it. If you don't give him something to do. In Mark chapter 16, the great verse there, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And these signs will follow them that believe. It wasn't long before where these people had, had hard hearts and things were going wrong. Now God comes on the scene. Spirit of God starts moving. Go ye into all the world. I want to tell you, God's words are so powerful if you let them penetrate on the inside of you. It was just over your head or in your head. Won't help you much, but it gets in here. Go ye into all the world. These signs will follow them that believe in my name, in my name, in my name. You know what the Bible said? It says that they got up and they went and they started to preach the gospel and God went with them. If you want to get God to go, don't go, don't go before you. He'll go with you. He'll go with you. 
Friend, I want to tell you, it's a time to smash and pull down. It's time to get refired. It's time to allow the anointing to, to do something, kick into you a life. Find a situation, find a circumstance, and do something so dynamic and so powerful. If you've got a ministry gift on your life, a prophetic music, singing, whatever it is, I want you to quickly come out right now. I always want to anoint you. Come on, come on, quickly come. We're going to release you. We're going to activate. We're going to release something. By the way, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Surrender to Him. Let Him come into your life. Let's just pray a prayer. Can we all pray this prayer together? Say, Lord Jesus. Everybody say it out loud. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I may not know you, but I want to know you. If you're real, will you touch my life? Jesus, touch me today. I want to know you. I want to know what it is to be saved, to be free in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Let's let everybody just shut your eyes for a moment. If you said that prayer today and, and you meant it and you've never said it before, would you make sure that, that you talk to somebody? Might be your friend or somebody just say, Look, I said that prayer today and I want to know Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to know him. Amen.